So, what do you believe in? When people find out that I don't believe in God, one of their first questions to me is often, what do you believe in? They probably think they're asking me a really simple, straightforward question, but they're not. We use the word belief in a whole range of different sentences. Look, I can think of five of them just off the top of my head. So before I can really answer the question, what do I believe in? I have to first of all think about what belief actually means. The first sense in which we use the word belief is in a phrase such as, I believe the capital of Mozambique is Maputo. I don't know that it's Maputo, but I believe it is. We're using it almost synonymous, synonymously with think. I think it is. So it's interesting that that use of belief actually contains within itself a seed of doubt. It represents uncertainty. Now we can easily remove this doubt by Googling Mozambique and finding out what the capital is. And lo and behold, it actually is Maputo. So now we no longer believe that, we know it as a fact. So that state of belief is not something that we want to stay in. It's a temporary state. We want to convert that from belief into knowledge. Second sense in which we use the word belief is when we say something like, I believe in fairies or I believe the world is flat. This is almost a statement of defiance. It's a statement that despite the evidence, despite the lack of evidence, despite any evidence you might show me to the contrary, I believe in fairies. I believe that the world is flat. It's a kind of defiance and it's almost worn as a badge of honor. No matter what you tell me, no matter what you show me, I will continue to believe this. And sometimes I think people who believe in God use the word believe in this way as a kind of defiant statement. It's kind of a declaration of how strong their faith is. I'm not going to let the facts get in the way. It's a kind of not irrationalism, nor even non-rationalism, but really of anti-rationalism. So belief is actually opposed to reason here. It's actually opposed to fact. It's a statement of defiance. The third sense in which we use the word believe is somewhat similar to the first case, but here it's not something that can be proved so easily. For example, I might say that I believe there is life on other planets. Now, this is not something that we know already. It's not something that we can easily establish, but it is a question of fact, and it is something that we would hope will be resolved in the future. At the moment, I believe that there is life, maybe life on other planets, but I don't actually know it. At some point, though, it's possible that I will. And sometimes I think that people who believe in God are using believe in this sense. But in the case of life on other planets, the burden of proof rests with me, or with the scientist. We need to demonstrate that it's actually true. And so I would say that the burden of proof lies with those who believe in God in this sense. The burden of proof lies with them. The fourth sense in which I use the word believe is somewhat different from this. And this is the sense in which I think the New Testament tends to use the word belief or faith when it's speaking about God. The Greek word used in the New Testament is pistis. 
And it actually doesn't refer to factuality. It's not about believing that something. It's more about believing in someone. So it's used in the sense of trust. I trust you. I believe in you. It's not just that I believe certain things that you say. It's that I believe in you as a person. Now, one would hope that people who believe in God are actually using it in this sense. They're not using it in the sense of believing a fact that God exists. But they're actually using it in the sense that, yes, God exists and I believe in him. I trust him. I have faith in him. The final sense in which we use the word believe is different again. We might say, for example, that we believe in peace, or we believe in freedom, or we believe in love. Now, we're not saying that these things actually exist. They may not. But we are saying that we value these things. We see them as aspirational. I aim for peace. I hope for freedom. I long for love. So these are things that may not exist, but we value them highly. We believe in them. So as you can see, there are many senses in which we use the word believe. The first and the third, and to some extent the second, but the first and the third are questions of factuality. At the moment, we don't know something, we believe it, but we want to know it. So it's a temporary state that we want to leave. We want to leave the state of belief into the state of knowledge. The second one is also about factuality, but it's kind of uh, flying in the face of evidence, flying the face of factuality, if you like. I'm going to believe this no matter what you show me, no matter what you tell me. It's really in the last two senses that I would be inclined to use the word belief. So I might believe in a person, for example. I might trust a person. Now, trust is something to be earned, and it's not unconditional, and it's not absolute. There may conceivably be something that that person does that undermines my trust in them, my belief in them. But at the moment, my state of being is one of belief and trust with regard to that person. I believe in and value freedom and peace and love. These are things that I hold in high regard. So when someone asks me what I believe, it's not a straightforward question because I don't really know what they mean by the question. And sometimes I think they don't know what they mean by the question either. Maybe this helps to clear it up. 